What's up, y'all? I'm Andy. This is EPS Garage. Today, I'm kind of excited. I made something that I've never made before. I got commissioned to do a project. They're called stove top covers. Maybe you've seen them or heard of them. They're really kind of cool. I never made them before because I didn't really understand what they were, and to me, it kind of seemed pointless. However, there's a lot of people that really do like them and now that I've made one I get it I see why you'd want one they make your stove look really pretty you can if you have burners and stuff you can put it over it and then you can utilize that space more you can set stuff there if you're not using your burners so I, I guess I I get it now I made mine off the top of my head and just looking at some different designs online so it's pretty simple 28 inches long 20 inches deep two and a half inches high and I made it out of pine. I, um, I joined in some boards together to make the top and then I just cut some strips out of the same board and I used pocket holes to fasten it. I used pocket holes because that top jointed board is going to expand and contract, especially being in a kitchen, humidity, you know, boiling water. I'm sure the ki kitchen atmosphere changes rapidly. So I wanted the board to be able to expand and contract. So with that pocket holes and no glue should allow that to happen. The front front piece I did glue and use pocket holes to kind of hold everything together, but the the sides will allow the movement of the wood. Hopefully, that's uh, that's the plan. And then of course I put some little handles, cut some handles on. And this customer actually requested some cat paw prints across the top. Thought that was a good idea. She said her cat often crosses the stove so hey why not it was fun i got to get creative with some paint i just hand painted them on there you'll see that in the video if you like the video and it helped you at all then please like subscribe it helps my channel out tremendously and if you have any comments at all please feel free to share i'm trying to improve this channel and it's a lot easier to improve if i hear your comments first I take my 1x6 and I cut it to length, which is 28 inches. To make the top, I've got to joint the edges on my table saw. This way, when I put them together, they make a nice, neat match and there's no gap, as you can see. For the glue up, I'm using some Tight Bond 2 and I just put some on one edge for each mating edge. Then I made some calls out of oak and I'm going to use those to keep the boards flat since I don't have a planer. It's pretty important. And then basically use all my clamps. I've glued up my five and a half by 28 and three quarter length boards. And now the next step is let this dry some and then I'm going to cut it down the side. This is, I cut it over dimensions that I need so I can cut it down exactly. I was going to do a rabbit and glue it all into the rabbit. However, thinking that the expansion and traction would probably end up cracking and breaking if the wood can't move. So you've got to allow that expansion and pocket holes will allow that. Probably glue the front piece since that one's not going to be affected by the expansion. So keep wood expansion in mind whenever you're building your projects, okay? Yay, sanding time. Everyone's favorite. Where's the top? I ran it through the table saw, got my final dimensions. On this one, it's going to be 28 by 20. You can see, you can't even hardly tell where the lines are. Now that I made my top and I know what my dimensions need to be for my front and my sides, I'm going to go ahead and cut those. In this case, it was 28 inches for the front and the sides were like 19 and a quarter. What I'm doing here now is I want to figure out a cutout for a handle. So you can reach under this and pull it off on and off the stove. I've kind of figured up how deep I want it to go in. It's about inch and three quarter, three inches on each side. So it'll be a six inch spot to put my hand. I think that's how I'm going to do it. And I'll just round off the corners and then I'll round over all this on my router later. I think that's what we're going to go with right there. I'll take my jigsaw and cut this out and then I'll use this as the template for the other one. And this is the part where I wish I had a bandsaw. 
Nothing crazy here, just using the old jigsaw. I cut right on the inside of the line so I can make sure I'm there and then after that I'll smooth it over. Perfect. And now I just plied the pocket holes for the side rails in the front. And don't forget to sand over your pocket holes, get rid of any rough spots. You won't be able to do it after you put it together. Pocket hole time. So I'm gonna use some pocket hole screws, inch and a quarter. So this is three quarter inch boards. It's gonna expand and contract this way. So the front board, I am gonna use a little bit of glue, pocket holes. So this one will have a real tight bond. And then the side, side handrails that I'm just gonna pocket hole. The pocket holes are gonna allow the wood to expand and contract some. If I were to glue that all the way across, that the panel, the top board, wouldn't be able to move. So something's gonna give if it gets humid. Being in a kitchen, humidity can play a factor. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Just to think about that, okay? And there are other methods of doing this to get the same result. This is just a lot easier for me and, and it keeps the cost down for the customer. This customer wasn't quite sure what stain they wanted. So I went ahead and made a little board with some stain options. I have more stains than this, but uh, they're similar. So I gave this kind of wide variety. This one's kind of one of my favorites, the weathered gray. Just something to think about if you got a customer that's not quite sure, maybe make you a little deal like this. I did this real quick. Might make a permanent one with a bunch of different stains on it. That way your customers can choose what stain they'd like. Got her all sanded. And now I'm just waiting to find out what color stain that I'm gonna use. Once I know that, we're gonna stain it. Customer chose red oak. Like I said, this customer wants some kitty paw prints going across the bottom of the stove top cover. I'm going to transfer the image from paper that I printed off, perfect little size paw print, and I'm going to either wood burn them or just straight up paint them. I'm not sure. I might wood burn them, then paint them. Got to decide that, but that's my plan. I'm going to cut these out, make them a little further apart, and we'll have them go right across the bottom of it. I think it'll look really cool. So the carbon paper didn't work out. Instead, I decided to make a little stencil. So I traced it on paper, on cardboard, and then I cut it out. And then I used a marker, traced it, and went in and used some of my black outdoor paint that I use on most of my projects. You can get it at Walmart. It's really good, cheap paint. Great for projects. Time to leave my mark. I use a wood burner to leave my mark. If you'd like to know more about pyrography or wood burning, check out my other video. For the final finish, I applied three coats of polyurethane. Little trick in between coats, you want to wrap your brush up with a damp cloth and then put it in the fridge. It stays, uh, stays good for you until you want to put your next coat on. Water base, not oil. That's it. Pretty easy. Uh, there's no drawings, nothing like that. I looked online, found some different ways of doing it. There's a lot of different ways of making these. So choose the way you like. Of course, you saw in my video, I did pocket holes. The front was glued. Sides are not glued to allow for expansion. So you do need to keep that in mind. Otherwise, that's it. I'll put some maybe some general dis, uh, dimensions in the description of the video, but it, it's pretty easy to make. I don't think you'll have any trouble. Probably do need a table saw though. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.